you know, uh, this is a little strange. This was going to be strictly about biology and, you know, health and what they are finding in this clay why the animals eat the clay. So that's how I started down this path. But then when I heard David Attenborough, I said, wow, that's interesting. Now I'm going to make a direct appeal, a appeal to Sir David. And Sir David, I know you're, you're getting along in life as I am, and I think you're looking for truth as I am. And I think you have missed some of the things in life that have been presented in a different way then I am going to present them. Now, you can take my point or take somebody else's point, but I think you are the kind of person that does look for something. And I, I'm i going to present something, and, you know, uh, I really, really would love to, to, to get this to be understood, and I think you're going to want to understand it yourself, I hope. That's the interpretation I get of your feelings of of exploration now this this guy's only got 935 views it's, it's about five years ago animals eating clay george leonardo abeso now he says he takes no credit for the videos he uploaded only for educational purposes and you know that's the kind of guy that impresses the hell out of me so that's all I want to do, and that's all I'm interested in, too. I'm not impressed with myself, to be perfectly honest. But, you know, it's education and learning, but really education and learning is a process of investigation, not a process of just reading what somebody else tells you to remember. That is not learning in my world. And when, I, when they say to me, oh, you're like a professor, no, I'm not. I am... I am... I, I trained people my whole life. I call it training. And it's not training them to put an A into a B and a B into a C and a da 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 No, absolutely not. Training is, you know, how to investigate, learning to think. Think this thing through. And you have to be trained in certain disciplines like anatomy and biology and chemistry and physics and atomic nucleuses and all of that stuff. And once you have the basics to investigate, then you go off on your own. That's what I did. I had trained people and they went off to be very, very successful on their own. And I was successful on my own. So, you know, I'm, I don't have anything to apologize for. Now, Sir David, if we could understand the history of our past, then we could take it from there and then we can learn because it, there's things in the past that just were true that we, we just laughed at. Uh, I guess I'm just going to go right into it. All right, um, I had uh, three different specimens DNA certified and one of them was a huge human fingertip, absolutely enormous. One of them was a human lung about our size, and one of them was a smaller, but still a giant human fingertip. All three tested human, and these were PCR um, DNA tests. It was, it was just kind of expensive, and it took a couple of months to do, and they did an absolutely astounding job. And I believe I was the first one to have these ancient DNA samples done. And they came out dense in DNA, he said. They were dense for ancient DNA, is what he said. And I knew where to take them from, because I know where the arteries are and the veins and so forth. And they came out to be these homo sapien mitochondrial um, cytochrome B gene and the mitochondrial D loop region. Now, that's all I had them test for. And they were, it was a certified test, and it was from a fabulously qualified lab. Now, if anybody wants to test them, I have them here. And if anybody wants to dispute that that is a lung, let them dispute it. Let them dispute it. I've had this looked at by anatomists. Well, Gil Headley did the anatomy on all of this stuff. And he, he validated the things I said. And we did the, the fascia together and pretty much discovered interstitium. Way back, 12, 2012, 2013, 2014. They just announced it, 2015, 2016. 
And all these things died flat like that in the flood. And this is where the blood is in all of these areas. We go inside and take it out of the bloody spots. And uh, that's, that's what you got. It's, it's, just, it's a lung. So it's time to have this stuff looked at. And, and I have all this stuff here. I'll be absolutely thrilled to show you the things that I have discovered, sir. And, and they are stunning by any account. Okay, my wonderful friends, this kind of strange occurrence here. I'm looking into animals eating clay, and David Attenborough is on this, um, speaking about it. And I, I corresponded with David Attenborough long ago, and he didn't understand, I don't think, the mud fossils the way... I didn't present him correctly to him, I'm sure, because if he had understood what I was looking at, I'm sure he would have been interested. But anyway, we went back. It didn't It didn't pan out. Let me put it that way. Now, I would love to speak to him again. I know I see he's still active. You know, he's getting quite elderly, and so am I. <laughs> so if we don't talk pretty soon, it's going to be all over. Sir David, I was so appreciative of your response, my friend. I was just stunned that you did respond, to be perfectly honest with you, but uh, I would love to engage. All right, I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, David Attenborough is going to discuss why animals congregate at these certain places and why they need the, the source of minerals that they're finding there. I am going to make the video I was going to do on the clay that Sir David introduced, but I want to ask Sir David if he would please at least view this. I'm only going to go a minute or two in here, but this is a giant toe. That's the callus. That's the toenail. And that is the vein blood. It's extremely obvious. You'll see. Here goes. You'll be able to see well enough that that is where the toenail was. Now we saw the, the uh, callus. Whoops, I didn't start from where the callus was. Hold on, let's go back here. Because I was talking about grip skin. Well, you know what, Sir David, you should see this whole thing. Let's just go way back here. All right, this is what they're showing right here for barite. That is grip skin. Here goes. Grip skin, because I think that might be iridium. I know iridium comes from creatures, no question what's 100. I do a lot of chemistry, so I'm going to be talking about chemistry, I'm going to be talking about this and that, and I do the anatomy, and I do the biology, and I do the molecular, the biomolecular, all that stuff. You have to do it all, or you can't do any of it, because there's so much interspersion of, of disciplines that you, you have to understand them all, if you, or, or you have to go, oh, what do you think about this, what do you think about Well, I know what to think about it because I've looked at it all, and I've studied it all, and when I run into something, I get the answer for myself. You know, I mean, I dig around, obviously, I don't just pull things out of the air, but I understand the chemistry, I understand the biology and the anatomy and all that stuff, so I, I can put things together pretty good and pretty quick, and that is grip skin. Sir David, and I, it's time really, you know, you're, I, I believe you're 94 years old, my friend, and I want to work with you desperately because I am 72 and, um, you know, I'd like to hit 94, it would be fabulous, but um, I, I'm sure you want the truth, and here it comes. Now, where it is in your body, I don't know, but I do know that it's, well, let me put it this way. Here's the deal with the reading. Here it is right here, IR. Iridium. See what that is? That, that, you may not understand this, but this is right in the middle of the transition metals. Transition metals give and take from your body, and they are in the blood. So they found the um, this layer, this uh, Luis Alvarez found a layer on the earth that he claimed was iridium, it had iridium in it higher than the normal concentration. I don't know how much iridium was there, but he said it covered basically the earth. He said it was from an asteroid impact, created this huge cloud of iridium, which I dispute. I say it was from the global flood 
It was all written in every culture. If you've studied Velikowski, and I have, and I've studied everything, so don't tell me that I need to look at this or I need to look at it. I've looked at everything. You need to look at everything. Velikovsky went and he looked at everything in every culture, and he found that they all had the same story. All right, you're going to have to look him up and do your own research. Now, I know how to look at blood vessels, and I, I know how to look at the anatomy, and I know how to look at the chemistry. Four point three to four point six occurs in tabular crystals in granular form or in compact masses resembling marble. You see that? That's the bloody layer right below the grip skin. Now all of the softer stuff has eroded out of that really tough as hell matrix. And then at the very bottom, I don't know if he's going to show it again. Color. It's, color it's got all those holes. White, yellow, brown, red, green. You see this? These are the plugs that snap this down. And you're going to see it. And this is all the blood that goes along with it. So but let's go take a look at that. All right, there's grip skin right there. That's a giant toe. <laughs> I'm telling you, and I, I can prove it. And you can't deny it after I show it to you. That is the kind of grip skin is, is on toes and fingers and all that. And this is the calcification areas. And I show this in the microscope. And, and how this, whoops, you can't see that, can you? No, you can't. Over there is, well, there, there's some over. Those are like the pads on your your toes and your, the, um, like the, the pads on your thumb and things like that. They're a little bit more calcified, and that gives you a little more structural stability, and that's on, in certain areas of the toes. We're here, too, which you could see, but this and is... I had a lot of moisture see. on there. This I put water on it so you can see it. You and see. You, can see the, you see the red and the brown in here. Anytime you see red and brown, and these blood colors, you know you got some arterial or, you know, when it's red it's arterial, when it's black it's vein. Now, that is the um, uh, grip skin. That, like I said, is a toe. Look at this. This is the, oh, this is the callus. guy's uh, callus. <laughs> That's the callus on the toe. I, I, I'm serious. I am absolutely serious. And this, if you can see, you should be able to see well enough that that is where the toenail was. Now we saw the the uh, callus. We see the toenail. We've seen the grip skin. This is the vein blood right here. And the only reason the vein blood blew out on this one because the artery was capped off by this enormous, unbelievably structurally unbelievable callus. Look at that thing. And it is loaded with gold. I've looked at it. Now, in the microscope. Now, you see down here at the very end, that's where the, the vein blood blew back out again. It tried to form. There's no reason to go much further. Do you see this? They all had that strap running across the back of it's like wrapped with fabric. And that's the like, like each one segment of your bones are, um, I have one here. They're like wrapped in their own special fabric. And if you can see this, I don't know if you can see that little triangle. It's like the bone has a wrapping around it and it comes right around and it seals itself. The ancients used to call that tunica. I believe they call it uh, periosteum now. But that's that's this kind of stuff that wraps around. And I have other toes. I got a ton of these things. I have zillions of them. Now, that's enough to show for here. But you saw the grip skin. You saw the real gnarly stuff, which I showed you. And then on the bottom, you saw all those little plugs. There it is right there. The gnarly stuff is right in here. And the plugs are right down here. They're just snapping. It's the other little holes. This is what they were showing you, that chunk right there. That's it. And they come apart just exactly this way. Everything gets separated along its planes of fascia. Fascia is the separator in your body that separates everything from everything else. All your organs have fascia on it. All your tendons, all your muscles, all your everything. 
every layer is like a layer of separation. You can't have this mixed in with that without being separated and only certain things are allowed through and certain things are allowed back. Uh, trust me, I've gone to, I, I fully understand this and I will stand in front of anyone and discuss this and debate it. And Sir David, I would love to interact, my friend. Don't forget now, I'm coming to you because I, don't, I think you're the only one who can stand up. And I think you will stand up. And I saw you talking about the planet and the, the desperate situation we're in. I understand that too. I have electron flood theory, which is a completely new understanding of the nucleus, which is fully understood now that it's wrong. And I have the absolute proof to show that that is also something that we could talk about because that is the solution. Well, I don't, I'm not saying I have a solution, but I can tell you one thing. Until they understand how an atom is constructed, they will never have a solution, ever. Now, they're looking for a dead particle that does absolutely nothing, nothing the muon, and they're looking for the electron, which creates electron showers. I can show you those. Normally, they're attached together. When they concuss, they separate, and then they show their, their true nature. Okay, I'm not going to drag this out, Sir David, but this is an electron, one here and one there. Together they make photons. When they concuss into a venturi, which is a restriction, right here, the black little ball separates from the white, and the black ones go all the way around the outside. They reattach back here, but they don't stay with the white part. This was all from light. So it's no question whatsoever, it's part of the smallest particles they make. And, and CERN is looking for these little bitty particles. They should have started with light, which we started with. And that is the particle. And then it actually separates itself. Before it was accelerated, it just looks like this. Then it accelerates, so we know light is a particle, first of all, we just saw it. And it's accelerating, secondly, we saw that, so we know Einstein was not correct, what he said. These are the electron showers, and I, show, I talked about the muons and electron showers. There's the electron showers coming at us, and let's see the muons. All right, that's the light from the red laser. This is what it looks like as it approaches the Venturi. Here, the black gets out of the way. The white explodes, not a touch of black in here. Then the black balls reoccur down here. What we're looking at is muons, are the black ones. The white is the electron showers. That's what it is. Now, I say, and I claim, this is dark matter. That's the stuff they've been looking for. And I also claim, and you can see with your own two eyes, that this black, which is the dark matter in my world, completely, totally, 100% can disassociate from the white particle that it was attached to coming in. That tells me that they are probably quite correct. That They, they now realize the Bohr model is wrong, and they are admitting it, and they say there's probably more dark matter than there is energy in the universe. And I agree with that, because this is the energy, uh, the attractive force, is gravity. That's the gravity. The black is a gravity. That pulls the white particles together. And that's the only thing it does, because the white particles push each other away. So this is the puller, and this is the pusher. Basically simple as that. Sir David, we have new species too, we have, and not just one. <laughs> I have been approached by everyone that's been rejected by mainstream and I'm hoping you'll stand up now sir you have nothing to lose at your age you know you've made your statement in life and you've stood behind the things that you've said and now it's time to to, to take a, a reconsideration in light of mud fossils this is, now things are a little different and now I'm presenting research to show every region of science needs to be reconsidered. Now, I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I do have things that certainly look like they change things. And I'm asking you to, to contact me, sir. It's Roger, R-O-G-E-R, -E at mudfossils, with an S, dot com. All right, I appreciate you, I respect you, sir, and I was absolutely thrilled to get your response. I wished it had gone my way, <laughs> but uh, I really do. I love you, my friend. I've watched you my entire life, and uh, I respect you deeply, all right? And please, please respond. And if anyone knows David Attenborough, um, 
could you please pass this message along to him? All right, thank you very much.